Hey guys, Redstone Without Limits here, and uh, today we're going to start working more on the ALU and getting it to what it needs to do. So um, the first thing we need to do is we need to invert the inputs. So um, if you remember in the last video, we actually made the XOR, which looks like this. And um, basically whenever you put in one input, then you get an output. But if you have the top input on, you can use that as like an enable for the invert. So now it's now the signal is inverted. So that's uh, precisely what we're gonna do. Uh, but we're just gonna use that XOR instead of just putting a torch. So I wonder if I can fit this in here. If I can, then that'll, that'll be wonderful. I have a feeling we're going to run to that, so we might have to move it up a little bit. Yeah, we're going to have to move it up a little bit, but um, that shouldn't be too hard. So let's um, move this up slightly. Uh, right here. Okay, so now we're just going to move this, let's say, twice. So now it is moved up. So as you remember, we have to have uh, these repeaters here so it will work correctly. And then um, right here, to have the input for the invert like that. Okay, and then right here we put a redstone torch, like so, and then a repeater up here, and that will create most of the circuit. When I'll, all we need to do next is this, and we have the XOR right there, so it should work if we do a little test run. So that goes through, which is fine. Now if we turn on the invert. should be inverted. So that works uh, perfectly. So now um, what we do next is we're going to just stack this a few times. Stack it eight times because there's two times four. Okay, so like that. Stack seven because you just subtract how much you want to actually have okay so um, now that we have the inverts um, if you're doing this and you don't have world edit then basically you just build it over and over and over uh, however many bits you have times two so yeah that inverts we can just check that out Okay, so since we have two inputs on here, it goes through here and then carries over, and I have to carry out on. So it is CPU, we have a certain flags, so uh, we can do stuff like if statements, stuff like that, or make a comparator circuit, that's another one. So we need lamps for that, something to indicate that it's a, a carry. Um, we also need stuff like overflow so if every single one of these is on then that would indicate an overflow because it's the maximum number of um, numbers that we can actually have in this uh, which since this is 4 bit uh, it goes up to 16 you just multiply that by 2 so it would have um, or wait this can go up to so we have one, we have two, we have four, and then we have eight. And if we add those all together, we get 16. And the 16th would be the carry out. And then um, we add another eight. So we'd have, I think, f like 18, somewhere around there. 
Yeah, I might be wrong about that, but whatever. Uh, it's not about figuring out how much you can have, and rather just doing the logic behind it. So what we need to do here is have um, basically a large AND array, so or a large AND gate that will tell the, if these are all on or off, which we can do that by simply putting a torch on each uh, output like that. Okay, and then underneath that we're gonna have a line. So this is kind of like um, an OR gate because you're just putting everything into one line. So that's kind of how this works. I, I don't know how long this video is gonna be, but hopefully it'll be short enough to upload very quickly. Because I don't want to get you guys bored, of course. Yeah. Okay, so this would be our AND gate here. And it'll work like this. So this is your output. So this would be our overflow flag. So I'm going to do a demonstration of the overflow. Um, another thing we have to hook it up to is this here. So we're gonna get a get that. Okay. So this also has to be off for this one to be on. So we're gonna have to carry that over here. Like so. There we go. So uh, now we have the overflow, and that one's uh, pretty important. I would say. So we have the overflow. Once we have all of the outputs on. So there. So that is an example of overflow. Okay, so that works fine. Cool. Now another thing we need is the flood carry. So that'll basically turn on every single f carry line in the adder. Um, I can use the slab to make sure the torch doesn't interfere with our signal. Let's do that. Okay, so um, that's just gonna keep the signal from going down or going into the or bleeding into the signal. I want to say like that, and then there's a signal here or slab here. Like this, okay. So now we put a torch here, here, and here. Now we just run a piece of redstone across this. As you can see, the torch isn't bleeding into it, so we have done something successfully. Okay. So once we turn on this flood carry line, um, it will basically fill up all of the inputs. Let me just, um, yeah, that inverts off. Okay, cool. It will uh, fill up all the floods, so it'll go into this signal, into this signal, and then also out to this um, flag here, the carry flag. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to start, I'm going to label these, because at the end of the series, I'm probably going to put a world download. So overflow. Then we have carry out. Cool. So yeah, I'll probably put a um, world download at the end of the series, so you can get that, and you can look at all the examples that I put. Okay. So for right now, that is enough flags, but there is one more thing that we need, and it's cut carry. This will be useful for getting logic out of these um, gates, such as an XOR, because with an XOR, you have the XOR part, or the AND part, and that basically gives you the carry out, which we don't want, because that would not be good for a logic gate. So we have these. Yeah. 
So um, if we want to cut carry, I'll do an example. So we have these two signals, and that obviously gives us a carry, which we don't want. So if we cut carry, then it only um, goes out this one. So since these are both on, um, it'll give us an out. That's what we want. Okay. So. Um, but I think that will do for this ALU. If you like this video, um, I might be doing a part two to this because there's a few things that you need for the ALU, a few more that I haven't mentioned in this video. But anyway, if you like this video, then go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more, then go ahead and subscribe. I make videos every day, so you'll never get bored. Um, but yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.